Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I've been involved in transactions before where the seller leans over and goes, hey, I'll give you a discount if you pay cash. And so the question always is, uh, even if you save money paying cash, do you run any risks paying cash? And of course you do. That's one of the reasons that I don't recommend you do that, especially in a big ticket item like, I don't know, a car. So here's a story out of uh, Miami. Adam sent it. Thanks a lot. From the Miami Herald, David J. Neal wrote it. Buyers of 11 cars say they paid a Miami car salesman $179,000, but never got their cars. So customers of this dealership say the employee pulled the ultimate scam on them, took their money and gave them nothing. Then when police arrested the man and that arrest was shown on TV, some more people came out of the woodwork saying, yeah, he got us too. So arrest reports say the man is 51 years old and he was handcuffed and hauled out of a dealership uh, and lives in North Miami-Dade. Now, they claim he did his money for nothing scam while a finance manager at another dealership in town. So since he was arrested in May, he's been a resident of the Miami-Dade Corrections uh, Center, charged with eight counts of third-degree grand theft, two counts of second-degree grand theft, four counts of worthless check given, one count of theft from an elderly person, and one count of organized scheme to defraud. Uh, So they've asked him to post a bond of $67,000. And a bunch of these charges, I did not include the dollar amounts, but that's what makes a difference. So two counts of second-degree grand theft from $20,000 to $100,000. And then a count of theft from an elderly person from 10000 to fifty. And so those are just basically the brackets within which they work. So totaling the amounts on the police reports, the man took $179,800 from buyers that he convinced to pay him in cash. As described in the arrest reports, he used his position as a financial manager to paint a screen of legitimacy on the transactions. And in one case, familiarity. One report says a buyer trusted him because she'd bought a car before at that dealership, and this man went to school with her mother-in-law. So he told her he could get her a really good deal on a car, but he had to be, uh, it had to be cash, a cash purchase. The victim trusted that since the deal was taking place at a very large dealership, it must have been a legitimate deal. After she gave the man $32,000 in cash, He gave her an excuse as to why she couldn't take the vehicle on the day that she made the first payment. She apparently paid it in two installments. After a few weeks, he stopped picking up the phone calls and the victim demanded her money back. So she didn't get a car. Does she get her money back? When she went to the dealership, she found that he didn't work there anymore. (laughs) So the real question is, did they do any paperwork? Did, Did she look at a real car? So she looked at a real car and said, I want to buy that car. There should have been paperwork created. So if you give somebody the cash for a car, they should give you the keys immediately. But if they don't, they should at least give you the paperwork immediately, like the application for title or the purchase agreement or both or both. Earlier in December, the man told a buyer he could sell a 2019 Honda Civic, which according to Kelly Blue Books was about 20 grand for $8,900. A, another car for fifteen, which was five thousand dollars under its value, and uh, another car for ten thousand dollars, which is about two grand under the actual value of the car. The only catch was that he could only purchase the vehicle cash through him, since he was the financial manager of the dealership. And it turns out the guy actually did work at the dealerships, and he had these positions. And at this one dealership, he got people to give him the cash, and he just never gave them the cars. So the buyer paid the two good-to-be prices in December, but the man said the cars were at the shop. And in this particular case, a buyer bought more than one car. It looks like he bought three cars and kept being told that the cars were being worked on as if they're going to repair the car before selling it to you. (laughs) See, that should have been the first clue. And they go, oh, the car's being worked on. We're going to fix it before we sell it to you. Okay, this is obviously a scam. I want my money back. Oh, and so the customer asked the man for his money back. And the man said, well, I've got supervisors here at work. I can't give you the money back while they're here, which would seem to indicate that something here is not being done correctly. And I know some people are going to say, Steve, 
You're telling me that when a guy says, give me cash and I'll give you a great deal on this car, and he's the finance manager of the dealership, that somebody should immediately just assume that this entire transaction is false and fraudulent? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because remember, he's not selling you the car himself. The dealership is selling you the car. So when you get the documents that say you're buying the car, it doesn't have this man's name as the seller. It's the dealership selling you the car. So this notion that you can be buying the car from the dealership by giving this man cash, but he can't give you the cash back, otherwise the dealership will find out about it, implies that the dealership doesn't know that the cash was given. And you're saying, I know you're saying, Steve, oh, no, but that's the whole point is that obviously if this is being done under the table and no one knows about it, he can't be selling you a car. The car. The, <laughs> half the audience right now is going, Steve, that's so painfully obvious. You don't need to point it out. The other half's going, no. <laughs> I know my audience. A few days later, when the victim returned to the dealership to confront the man, he was advised by someone that the man was no longer there. They should file a police report because other victims were scammed by the subject. And by the way, <laughs> when the dealership says, oh, our guy ripped you off in his official capacity here, you need to go someplace else. Ah, uh, that's not how that works either. The man was working for you in an office provided by you, uh, and while on company time, was taking cash from people, <laughs> supposedly to sell them cars. Uh, the dealerships might have something to say here, because remember that when somebody's working someplace, somebody is presumably overseeing and supervising them. So if you believe you were ripped off by this man or any other used car salesman, you should call the Miami-Dade police, and their phone number, of course, is easy to find. So it's a really weird scam, um, and I've not heard of this one ever happening at a large dealership. I've heard of it happening at a small dealership, and I've also heard it happening at a, a one-person dealership where there's some guy who's got a corner shop, and he's got six cars parked out in the corner, and it's, you know, Biff's used cars, okay? And you go in and, hey, I'm Biff, okay? So you're talking to Biff, the man himself, the, the legend. The, he's, he's the guy. That's Biff. And Biff goes, hey, pay me cash. I can help you out here, okay? And you pay Biff some cash, and he goes, okay, that car right there, we'll prep it for you and have it in a couple days. For some odd reason, Biff doesn't produce the car. Now, you might say, Steve, just for argument's sake, give me an example why that might somehow possibly happen. Well, let's suppose that Biff took the car in on trade, and the person who traded it in had a lien on it that they couldn't afford to pay off. So Biff says, here's the deal. I'll pay, uh, I'll, I'll pay you an amount of money for your car, but I can't pay you till I sell it. Okay? And so depends on what he sells the car for, because he might owe money to the person who brought the car in. He might owe money to the lien holder, or he might use the money he got from you to take care of the previous transaction where he did something wrong. And so I've heard of different examples of this, where somebody's got, it's not quite a Ponzi scheme in that sense, but it's almost like a complicated shell game, where the guy's got like six cars on his lot, all of them got liens on them, and then he sells one to somebody, but he can't process the paperwork because the lien is there, but he took the money he got from that sale to make his house payment, or his child support payment, or something. And so now when you come in to buy car number two, he goes, pay me cash, I can have to take care of you. And it might make sense that you pay cash there, right? Might make sense. And so then what happens is he takes the cash from you and tries to fix the previous deal. Now all he's got to do is sell another car to take care of your deal. See? And <laughs> robbing Peter to pay Paul. That's what they call that. And so it is, it is uh, something I've heard of before, but not at a large car dealership like this because the two dealerships they mention here, uh, he got handcuffed and hauled out of a Hyundai dealer, and the other one he worked at was a Honda dealer. And so these are larger dealerships, and at one of them, he appears to have actually been the finance manager. And so if he's the finance manager, somebody looked at his credentials, said, okay, this guy's qualified to do this, and yet while he was there, he managed to get 11 people. Uh, actually, he got, actually managed to sell 11 cars uh, and get the money for them, but just not deliver the cars. So it's a crazy story. And I just hope these people can get their money back. But the sad part is that the money they gave him is probably gone. So right now, there should be attorneys in Florida scrutinizing these transactions going, yes, but isn't the dealership on the hook for some of this? 
and they very well could be. And so I am not an attorney in Florida, uh, but I know attorneys who are. And so I hope they're looking into this. So from the Miami Herald, Adam sent it. Thanks a lot. David J. Neal wrote it. Buyers of 11 cars say they paid a Miami car salesman $179,000 but never got their cars. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Problems are not stop signs. They are guidelines.